Hello everyone. Before I start anything, I just want to say my recording time has been limited this week. It will continue to be limited for the next few weeks. Um, I'm recording this on Sunday morning, which is a lot later than I would like to have started it. But I'm going to try and get as much done to get as full an episode as possible as I can. So, I'm here back on my backup of the world, which by now is quite an old one, but you know, it's the one I'm using and I might as well keep using it. Ignore the prismarine, that's just a block I used for this. Um, I'm still not in the mood for that and for getting more quartz. Oh, no, no, no. I say I've had enough of digging, I'm going to be doing a lot of digging, but it won't, it'll be just plain digging. Because I have a quad slime chunk within my base, just over here. It is, let's use this brilliant new shortcut that was added. These four chunks here. And so I've been designing this. Now, in the actual one, these will alternate. So the birch will be here in the acacia there, birch acacia and then this again, and then Birch, Acacia, Birch, Acacia. But I did this with clone commands, which is why they're all the same as each other. So this is a slime farm. It is quite a good slime farm. I did two tests of it for 45 minutes each. Um, optimum means I had command blocks killing every single other overworld mob. And so there's literally nothing but slimes all the time. So literally the best performance I could possibly get out of this farm ever it was about 14 and a half stacks in 45 minutes a realistic test where I didn't kill all the mobs and I just afk'd above this farm uh, about two stacks in 45 minutes which isn't bad and um, that does mean it take an hour and a half to get four stacks which is one stack of magma blocks which is part of what I'm doing this for because I want to see if I can realistically compete with magma blocks and I'm not sure I can, but I'm going to try. Now, it took me a good few hours to design this. Uh, the walls being andesite is a placeholder. I will decide what to do with the walls later. Um, but if I head out here into the back part, you can see... Well, you can't see that much. It's quite dark. Um does go through a ravine, or rather a ravine goes through it, which is a bit of a pain, because I'll have to light all of this up for good, to get decent efficiency. Um, there are a few other caves as well. The other end of the ravine is over on the other side, and it's much less annoying. So, as to the slime balls, originally I was going to do a thing where they would all be spat down to the bottom down tubes like this, they would come to the edge, going to this, uh, well, droppers, uh, which would spit them into these little tubes, which would take them down to the bottom into ice and water streams, which I had all set up down here. This might have needed jiggery pokering because I just cleared all of this down to here, which means there could actually be bedrock where some of these blocks are in the actual world. I don't know. I would have had to have moved it around or just run the water over bedrock, to be honest. It would have slowed it down, but it wouldn't have caused any problems. Um, but then I thought... Do I want that many separate redstone modules? Uh, not really. And what's the point in sending them all the way down just to carry them all to one place and then send them all the way up? Which is what... Which one? This one. Which is what this would have done. Send them all the way down here just to send them across here and up there. Uh, no, why bother? So instead what I designed is do, 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 this where I will do one of these on each side uh, one of, no, one of this, 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 this one here. So they'll come to the edge and there's one of these on each floor these modules, so it carries up on the signal from the bottom there, and that carries up into here, 
and into that one will fire because of that block I mean they will make it into here at which point they will trigger this so they will get carried all the way to the top and into this water stream which then goes across into the hoppers into the chests now I'm undecided somewhat on whether to have four of these or just bring uh, I think I need to really um, at the moment we've just got these hoppers here as, as hacking a solution to converting how I'd done it initially into something that carried them all around into there for the time being but uh, I think I will do four separate towers and they'll all just come up into the water streams and then that goes around and that glass is getting on my nerves so I am going to go up here and out. Right, so the way this works is you come down the stairs, I will work out what I'm doing with that. I've got the chests here and the maintenance access is that. Of which I have a little uh, comparator pulse extender just to keep the door a bit open and a bit longer a bit. The door open a bit longer than the button press provides. Um, but it's a flush piston door so you can't even see it from here. And the button obviously blends in somewhat against the wall so the wall will probably be something grey. And then on each floor there'll be a pair of doors like this for which the redstone is fairly straightforward. Um, so this is this is a design you may or may not have seen. Isuma showcased it. I can't remember off the top of my head whose design it is. I'll probably put a caption on the screen now saying who designed it. Um, but it's quite straightforward. Slime spawn. They target the golems and because they're slimes and they're thick they go straight into the cactus. Pretty straightforward. And there are, there's room for five floors. Uh, I've got the hole in the corner so I can speed this up. That's as close together as I can do the floors. Well, theoretically, maybe I could do a block higher, but as it is, I have to piston these slabs into place to get them in above the golems. Um, I mean, this is absolutely going to have to be built from the bottom upwards because I need to drop the golems in to make sure they actually fall into the fences, and then I need to do the layer above them. It's going to be a bit of a pain. I don't. There's a good chance I won't finish this farm this episode. As it is, I need to dig the hole for it, which is going to take quite some time, even with a beacon, because it's four chunks down to bedrock. I mean, that's that's not a small task. Um, this might be a really short episode. It depends. It literally might be this, and then me showing you progress on the hole and then starting the bottom layer, maybe. I'll seem to get sea lanterns. I'll have to uh, see if I can get hold of Teg to inquire about that. Actually, no, there's a shop. I can buy some. Um, but yeah. So that's, that's the design, anyway. It's going to take a lot of droppers, fair amount of redstone, fair number of hoppers, uh, I can use normal ice here, there's only a packed ice there because it needs to be a solid block for that. Um, I could use packed ice for all of it, but I'll probably use normal ice as long as I don't light it, it's not a problem. And I'll probably put blocks underneath just in case. Uh, but yeah, I mean I need to dig out the two chunks, but then I also need to dig... Well, I don't need to dig out all of this space. It might be better if I do but I don't strictly need to. But that's an extra two blocks. Two, three? Two. An extra two blocks on every side below the surface, which is at 60. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's enough talking about this. I am going to actually uh, get on with it now. Progress update number one. That's Y60, and I'm working on Y58. My pick has run down once. And my spade's most of the way down too. 
So let's go and repair. Here's a question for you guys. How do you prevent baby zombies? You make sure your zombies are spayed! Get it. Get it. No. no not, not, not even a little bit funny. No. You're no fun. Update 2. Y53. So I can do about seven layers with one run of my pick. Which means it's going to be about another... Eight. Lots of using my pick. Ish. I'm not going to do progress updates every single time my picks run down from now, obviously, because that'll just be boring. Oh, I don't know how long this has been. I'll, I'll, I'll put a caption on screen with how long it's been between the last clip and this one. But, uh, I'm done. Completely finished. I'm pretty sure I've gotten every non-bedrock block I can get at within this within the two chunks. Um, there might be odd ones hiding, but I've been. F oh, there's one. Um, but I've been pretty thorough. I've also gone around the edge and grabbed anything of value that's below the bedrock layer. So a couple of ores that were sort of down here. Um. So I think this is as cleared out as it's going to get. Realistically. Oh, there's another one. I mean, it's it's just... kind of OCD to do this, really. I don't need to get every single block. Because what I'm about... I just need to make sure there are none exposed that stuff could spawn on. So what I'm about to do is slab over the top of the entire bedrock layer. Just to make it spawn proof all the way across. Um, I'm debating whether to do it at that height between the bedrock. I guess I probably should just so that I don't have to take up a block there when I'm, I'm not sure how high above the bedrock the uh, bottom of the farm is going to be. So yeah, I'll do that. Um, 20 diamond ore. Considering the average per chunk sized area is 3 ore, the expectation for 4 chunks would have been about 12 ore. So, there is a lot of diamond ore here. That's great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to slab this over and then I guess I'll start looking at gathering materials for the farm. I doubt I'm going to get any work done on building the farm today. Um, it's seven o'clock. I need to do this slabbing. I need to do other things, you know, real life things. Um, and I need to have this video edited and rendered, which will be probably I'll do tomorrow morning. But that means I won't be able to do any recording. Well, we'll see. I'll, I'll get done as much as I think I can, but don't be surprised if I just start gathering some materials and that's the end of the episode. We will see. This is like a weird sort of parkour, you just don't want to fall into a too deep hole because then you have to place a block to get out. Anyway, getting sidetracked. So, this is going to be a very short episode. I've been gathering materials, I've got all the wooden slabs, I've got the iron golem materials, I've got the fences, I've got all my sandstone slabs, I've got my sea lanterns. It was weird buying sea lanterns. Um, I'm used to being the one selling them. I've got all my hoppers, got my sand, got my cactus. Red sandstone. Oh my god, red sandstone. Red sandstone is stupidly hard to get in large quantities. Those nine blocks are from finding two cave entrances that had red sandstone in both of our mesas. We've got a 1.9 mesa and a 1.10 mesa. I looked around both. I found two cave entrances that had red sandstone, and all I got from it was nine blocks. The alternative is to make it by crafting sand. So I'd need 53 stacks of red sand, which would be fun. 
Muryang why did you make it so that it's orange stained clay not red sandstone under red sand really it's just stupidly hard to get but anyway I'm not building it this episode Oop, wrong button I'm getting pretty good at this as well by the way generally quite consistent look yeah, when the elytra deploy Ooh, oh oh barely missed that so as you can see this is all in can I no I can't get myself up um, this is all in place I just have to dig out back here a few blocks of course eventually but I'll just get the platforms built to start with well, most of the platforms there'll be gaps because I can't do the red stain no the red sandstone ones which is really annoying but this, the next episode might start with a time lapse it might it's been a little while since I did a montage at least a little while on this series because I did one in uh, captive minecraft the other day but uh, anyway that is going to be for this episode. If you've enjoyed the video, short though it is, remember to leave a like, share a favourite and comment, help support the channel, follow me on Twitter to stay what's going on, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>